Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about mortgages and the misconceptions with mortgages, how most people seem to believe that unlike rent, uh, your mortgage will stay the same. That is a common misconception. It does go up. Kirby, do you have more to add on that? But that's pretty much the topic we're going into. Yeah, uh, you know, we're going to go over the misconceptions first, uh, and then we're going to Provide answers, of course, to those misconceptions. Yeah, I know how our videos go. We get on rant and rage and talk about different things, but we always give you the solution to the answer. But yeah, we can start off with the first one. The first one you said is uh, mortgages. People, you know, the the main the main misconception is people say, "Oh, I need to go buy a house because my because I'm tired of rent increasing." Now, when you buy a house, yeah, you're and then, you know, it's a fixed rate. But then you have this thing called escrow. Escrow is the property taxes and insurance. And then if you're in a place like Florida, your insurance can double overnight on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, and also, like here in Florida, uh, you know, rents increase at a dramatic pace, depending on if you move them from one rental location to the next. But that escrow payment is something that's uh, very vital that most people don't talk about. They just say, oh, yeah. Get fixed rate debt or get I need a 30 year fixed loan and everybody just think that the coast is clear. And first off, it's not true. And I could use an example that uh I had when I built my house in Texas. It was the first house and I was brand new. Only thing I knew was uh, you know, listen to my parents or listen to the, you know, older people who've done it before me. Uh they always used to talk about Oh yeah, you need to get a 30 year loan to make sure it's fixed and make sure it's not uh make sure it's not a variable rate. So you're paying the same thing every month. And then so of course, me listening to, you know, my elders, they was not wrong by you should get fixed rate debt, but actually how it works. So when the house finished getting built in Texas, our mortgage payments was around like $9.97. 997. And then in a place like Texas, also the property taxes was low because we was like the maybe the fifth or sixth house in the subdivision. And then uh and then insurance is fairly decent. But then as time rolled on, property taxes start increasing. And in Texas, there's no limit to the amount that your property taxes can increase. Like, you know, certain states, it's a cap on a percentage that your property taxes can rise every year. And then, so again, like I said, we was around the nine ninety seven range when we was paying our first mortgage, and this was around December time. And then, of course, the house get built. So, of course, those you know the built structure was not on you know two thousand seventeen's tax letter. I mean, you know, you bought a house, you thought you thought your, your insurance was gonna be super cheap, but then what goes on the next year? The property taxes increase, so then our mortgage payment goes from. 997 to like 1101 or 11 uh so it goes up roughly about a hundred and something dollars and then so fast forward we were in the house for three four years when we left the house on the exit after we sold it we was paying about fourteen hundred dollars a month so just think if you was renting a place and you started renting at 997 and then you stayed there and then the landlord raise it to $1,400 a month. That's the same dynamic we was going through. So yeah, the interest, the interest in principal is fixed, but the escrow payment and things like that always increase. And of course, I'll leave it like that, but I was about to jump into something about PMI. But Alex, what you got on uh, mortgages? What's one of the misconceptions that you have out there? Yeah, I mean, for those buying a new home where you're going to have it built, um, the first year they're going to tax you on just the land and then you'll get hit over the head the following year once they tax you for that house. And that's what happened to yeah. us. Um, yeah, so what, what was when you when you bought yours, because yours was fairly recent, I, I gave rough numbers because mine was over 10 years. Wait, 2002? I said 17, I meant seven. So that was over like 13, 14 years ago. So this... Give us an uh, insight on what your numbers was your first year and then after the second year, what yeah. was your, how did your taxes so, look? So for our taxes, I think I think our tax amount was $2,300 when, when we got the house the first year. 
And so I'm thinking like, okay, that's, and then it had gone up, like our mortgage payment had went from like 1301 to 1308 or something. And I called because yeah. I thought, oh, why is it going up? I didn't know that, you know, and they're like, yes, oh. keep Alex at seven dollars. We ain't So it goes up. So I call and he's like, oh, it's just the insurance. I'm like, oh, okay. Then by the end of the year, uh, the property taxes came in. It was like five thousand dollars. And um plus with insurance having gone up the following year again, our mortgage payment went into a like a default like it not a default but like a it was uh like a negative balance so they right right right, right because they didn't take enough out in escrow right exactly so they had to increase our mortgage payment um so that we can make up that balance and so i just thought it was like oh let me just pay the negative balance so i it was like it was like probably like twelve hundred dollars or something so I paid the twelve hundred dollars. Right. So where the escrow is at zero, and we're like, no, 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 you still have to make up like the additional two grand that we forgot to take. And I was like, what the heck? Right. So our mortgage payment went from like thirteen hundred to eighteen hundred, and then we paid off the the extra amount that we had to for the escrow, and then it still because of the property taxes went from like eighteen hundred to fifteen thirty nine. So 1539 being 200 and roughly $40 more than, you know, what we were quoted for from buying a house. And now taxes went up again. So this was funny is so we also had missed the homestead. I thought I did it online, but right. I don't know. I, I guess I didn't file it correctly. And so we actually went to the office to file it because we had missed it. So then once we filed it, I'm thinking, all right, this gives you a $50,000 discount off the assessed value. So I'm like, okay, so that'll be good. So so our assessed value was 187000 And this was without Homestead. So I'm like, all right, this right. Homestead is going to bring it down to 137 So the following year, our assessed value was like two. It was like 256 And I was like, that's like 70000 more. So like even... The homestead discount didn't even cover the the additional value. So um so yeah, the it went from like from fifteen thirty nine to like now we're paying roughly sixteen hundred and that's a matter of three years, give or take. Yeah, so that's roughly just like a landlord a landlord raising the rent a hundred dollars every cycle. Yep. Every rent cycle. But those are things that people don't understand when it comes to mortgages and things like that. The insurance, if you're in a decent neighborhood, if you're in a good neighborhood, the value of your property should keep going up and the assessed value will keep going up and the escrow payments will increase. If you're in a place like Florida, then your insurance definitely is going to rise. I mean, you know, we talked about it on a couple of properties I have. Insurance went up. Insurance itself went up 85% on one and then a hundred and something percent. But you know, I found a loophole to cut that down. But yeah, that was that is one of those things. And then people, you know, the the people that don't understand the whole inner workings of a mortgage. And and most people, some people who have a house don't understand the inner workings of a mortgage. Uh, but because we do it time and time again, we see that the escrow is the thing that could raise havoc on a family, especially when they're very close to the margins, when they could barely afford this, you know, barely afford the mortgage payment when they first get in. They're thinking, oh, everything's good. But then next thing you know, the mortgage payments increase. So what we try to do is, you know, share that information so people understand that your mortgage payment as a whole, if you're paying principal interest, insurance, taxes, and then, of course, if you didn't put 20 percent down, you have PMI on there also. All of those things are collaborated together in a mortgage payment. And then a couple of those are variable rates and that's property taxes and insurance. And it should be always good to, you know, shop insurance, you know, try to get it down lower as possible. I mean, in Florida, we got a little situation here where it's not much wiggle room, but always go negotiate those down every year if you can to keep that, uh, escrow payment lower it's nothing you can do about property taxes you can uh, contest 
the uh, property statement when it comes in March to try to say my value didn't increase as much, so you won't pay uh, more taxes. But if you're in a newer development, it's very it's going to be very very hard to uh, dispute property taxes going up. Um, but with all that said, Alex, what's the next one? You got any other misconceptions you got out there about mortgages? No, I just I think that people need to be more aware of that because um, a lot of people I think rather than trying to say okay this is the max we can afford let's purchase this they want to just go to the top immediately and right. i mean that could cost you you know your house really if you're going to go in thinking this could be you know the payment we're paying for the rest of our lives and then you know your mortgage payment goes up another you know 10 percent per year so right and at the time of this video this is march 4th so, and then just think about the dynamic that the economy is going in. So if, if people buying houses now and then they go and then they go to the top of their bandwidth as far as how much they can afford a mortgage. And then we, you know, you got recession, people crying left and right about recession. That's true. Um, and then let's say it's a, you know, two income household that's barely making the payment. And then if layoffs start happening and then one person lose their job or they have to lose the job that they're at and take another job at a lower price range, that eats into the ability to afford that mortgage. And of course, you're going to hear people in the comments saying things like, oh, well, my landlord is raising the rent, you know, $300, $500 a year. Yeah, I understand. I'm not saying that buying is worse than renting. Or buying is better than renting. Only thing we're trying to convey here is that it's not a fixed rate the entirety of the time. And then another caveat, caveat is for me, is people think, okay, I'd rather pay somebody else. I'd rather, I'd rather pay to get equity at home than rent from somebody else. What's your thoughts on that before I get into it? I think for it to make sense in that sense in in that form, like you have to really have a like a key location, key everything. Like the only reason why it probably worked for us in, in Florida or for me and my wife is because the home we purchased was new, so it has little to no issues. And then the anomaly that happened in Florida, where the equity actually went up dr dramatically. But for someone who buys maybe, say, a used house and then you're paying the mortgage payment and you're paying for repairs and then a lot of people are like, oh, let me just rip out all the carpet and put tile in, you know, all those additional expenses. Once you make up that equity, it's like you're either going to be bro broken, like break even or you're going to be like in the negative. So don't think of it that way because it's not it's you shouldn't think of it like a like an actual investment. I mean, yeah, there's equity in a home and you can probably use that for an investment, but to put money into your home, expecting results out of it. No, that's that's a terrible plan. Right. And and like you said, the you know, last couple of years, you know, we saw that big appreciation and you saw I mean, if you paid attention to any you know financial news, they said people have the ability to tap into this equity to improve their homes if you're going to approve the home to sell it got it you know put in a swimming pool or something to sell it i guess you know you maybe i got that's why you do it but i would just keep the money i mean why would i spend you know a hundred thousand dollars for a pool to increase the value twenty thousand dollars and then that if i mean especially a time like this, you go spend a hundred thousand dollars on a pool, it might not even increase the value of uh twenty thousand dollars because and I know I know they say 120, yeah, the cost of the pool, so it'll add a hundred and twenty thousand dollars to the value of the home, but it's really you spent a hundred, you spend a hundred, you get a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in value, but it's only a twenty thousand dollar profit. That's what I mean, twenty for any pros that's out there wondering why I said only twenty thousand dollars, but you do that, and then in this economy now, with the volatile, you know, interest rates and things like that, you might not be able to 
reach your peak value, especially if you need to sell the home. So that, you know, those things are very, very mixed and uh, confused in that state when people look at it like, oh, yeah, I can go remodel this and do this and then I'll bring the value. This is not HDTV. It worked great in a low interest rate environment where home value is just steadily increasing. Now we're in the 1980s, uh, not world, but interest rate environment. Values are not going to explode to the upper end unless you're just in a, a local market that the supply is very, very, very restricted and people, and it's a super huge demand for people to get there right now, especially with the higher interest rates and things like that. Those things are not going to be, those things are not going to push the value up because people look on a monthly basis on how much they can afford. And with interest rates higher, the same, the same amount of money you're paying a month for the house the person who buys that property is going to have to pay double. And I'm seeing sometimes triple or four X the amount that you're paying on a monthly payment. So yeah. people don't have that kind of money to pay, to pay that amount. The only thing you got to ask yourself is would you live in this house? If you had to pay four times a, a month, four times a month more. I mean, is it somebody out there that will pay it eventually? Yeah. There's somebody you will get the family that can do it, but don't think it's going to be people that's coming in droves to, pay, you know, 3X, 4X what you're paying now. And uh, especially in this interest rate environment, especially when the economy is, you know, people are shaky on the economy. So with all that being said, Alex, if you don't have nothing, we can wrap this thing up. Yep, let's see. Uh, with all that being said, guys, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.